Hi everyone, my name is Nitin Khanna. I'm the CEO of Mergitech Advisors, a global investment bank focused on small and medium-sized technology companies. And our mission is to help you realize the value of your company through mergers and acquisitions, but really to help you, the business owner, convert your hard work into wealth. The topic of focus today is the three essential things that technology companies and their owners must understand about mergers and acquisitions, or m and uh, And I want to talk to you first about uh, how to use m and as part of your growth strategy. So most of us, when we think about growth, think about either introducing new products into the marketplace or try to find new customers by growing our territories, regions, or adding salespeople to the company. Let's take a look at, as, for a second, from how big companies think. When you look at a big company and they do their strategic planning sessions, they have two sections to those sessions, inorganic growth and organic growth. And what they mean by those terms, organic growth is the kind of growth that you and I think about every day. How do we take a book of business that we have and add more revenues either from existing customers or by selling new products to existing com customers or getting new customers by either adding salespeople, territories, geographies, and the like. The second half of strategic planning is inorganic growth in a big company, and there they talk about how can we grow by buying the right companies which are a strategic fit for us. Uh, but both of those are, in fact, a function of growth. That is exactly how big companies think about it. So when we, as a smaller company, tend not to think about mergers and acquisitions, we're giving up a major tool that other companies are using to grow. And in fact, not only to grow, but also to reduce and to diversify risk. Uh, and sometimes this is not so apparent. So I'll talk in very simple terms. Uh, companies that are looking to make investments for growth are looking at both organic growth investments mainly because they think they're less risky. And I'll point out to you how they may not be less risky. For example, a technology entrepreneur who's thinking of investing maybe a million dollars in a new product that they think they can sell to existing customers and new customers, and then maybe has a budget for a million and a half dollars to hire five new salespeople, or maybe three new salespeople in, five, in, in new territories, including expenses of offices, salaries, and the like to open all these new offices, is making a huge investment that they believe is less risky than buying a company, or they've never thought of taking that two and a half million dollars and buying a company at all. That's a very highly risky strategy, though we may not understand it when we start, because when we first start our companies, we grow it to a certain point ourselves, and we add salespeople, and it grows. And so when we have money to invest, we say, hey, if I could just build new products and add more salespeople, maybe I'd grow again. The reason it's an, a risky strategy is, the first thing is when you build a new product, you have no idea truly of what the adoption rate of that product will be. It could have a lower adoption than, than you think, or it could have an adoption in a number of years that the return on investment is a much lower than you think. Also in the product, it may take more than a million dollars. So when you get done with a million dollar investment, you may find that unless you spend another half a million dollars, you can't even sell it to the first customer. So it's very, very risky. In terms of hiring and growing a sales uh, territory or a sales geography, that is also quite risky, and you know this well. Hiring salespeople is the most difficult kind of uh, sales hire, on, on only because it takes so long to find out if they're a right fit. And so you've lost not only the actual cost, the expense of that person over that period of time, but you've also lost the, lost the opportunity cost, because had that person been the right person, you would have been making sales already. So now you need another six to nine months, bring on a new person. So opening three, four, five territories at one is a pretty risky proposition, uh, and a pretty risky use on the whole of this two and a half million dollars. On the other hand, let's see what you could do with two and a half million dollars in equity. You could potentially, if you're willing to invest and have two and a half million dollars to invest in this example, it could be a lot less, it could be a lot more, uh, maybe borrow as much as three, four, five, ten million dollars against that two and a half million and go out and buy a company. Uh, to keep it simple, let's say you borrowed another two and a half million, you had two and a half million of your own, and you go out and you buy a five million dollar company. You typically get a company with three to ten million dollars in revenue between 750,000 and a million and a half in earnings. You'd get management team, you'd get folks, operators and execution people. Uh, you'd get existing customers into which you can sell your products. And you'd get products which you can sell to your customers. You can also have an opportunity for cost cutting and therefore raising the margin and profit margin of the combined company. 
So in a lot of cases, if you sit down properly and plan properly and look at both organic growth and inorganic growth as potential avenues for growth, you may find that the inorganic growth is a much better, much less risky use of your money than organic growth, which is building new products and hiring new salespeople. And there's an example of mergers and acquisitions being used in a way in which I believe most of our small and medium-sized CEOs are just not thinking about. So that's really why you should care about M&A. And I'll give you a couple other reasons where M&A is very, very helpful and should be, again, a part of every year planning, your quarterly planning. Uh, the second is diversification of risk. Far too many of us run our small and medium-sized businesses for many, many years, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. They provide great income to us. They potentially are a source of great joy to us. Uh, we hire a lot of employees and, and give them a good livelihood. But our wealth is entirely tied up inside those companies. So when we look across at our assets, we find a disproportionate amount. Sometimes 90, 95% of our wealth is right in our company. M&A is a method and a manner by which you can diversify your risk. So you can obtain what's called recapitalization capital. You go out to a private equity firm or other such partner, and they buy 40, 50, 60% of your company. If it's worth $10 million, you've now just put away four, five, six million that is not connected to the company. So should something happen to the company, you still have wealth that you've created through working over your lifetime for this company. The third essential thing that technology owners and CEOs should know about M&A is its use in helping you sell your company. And there are a variety of really good reasons that you may want to sell your company from. You've run it too long and you're tired of running it. Do you want to pass it along to the next generation, but for whatever reason, that's not possible? Uh, do you've got a great new idea or hobby or passion that you'd like to invest your time and energy and money in, and the business is just not allowing you to do that? And so when it comes time to sell your business, I think that's the time most people naturally gravitate towards M&A about learning about it or, or finding a banker. Uh, and that's a great use of those resources. But as we talk about in some of the other resources here on the website uh, or in the white papers we've done, it's better to start involving an M&A banker as soon as possible because along the way they can tell you when it is the right time to sell your business, when it might be valued at maximally, both because of what the industry do is doing and because of what your business is doing. Uh, so if you'd like to know more, uh, get more information either about the classic mistakes and exit strategy or about technology mergers and acquisitions in general, I invite you to visit our website at mergertech.com and thank you for your time and interest today.